Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. We are back here over Duna and I just got the gravity data for um, our, uh, <laughs> for the craters, the craters, yes, that thing that we were talking about. So now it's time to try to land this thing. And so we're at the apoapsis. We are, what we're going to do is we're going to go for an atmospheric re-entry of sorts. We're going to be careful, carefully push ourselves down into the atmosphere and try to bleed off some uh, speed here. Well, 33 should do. It's a very thin atmosphere, you see. So, all right. Let's give it a little punch of RCS there just to get us in the right place. So what we're going to do here, yes, is uh, bleed off a tiny little bit of speed to get us, basically, to start drifting us through the upper atmosphere. And hopefully we'll be able to pick up some atmospheric science and transmit it while we still have our solar array. Which would be nice. Can't argue with that plan, really. So we're going to do a very limited burn. I don't know exactly what an atmospheric re-entry trajectory looks like on Duna, but we're definitely going to need to do that. And we're going to lose all our fuel on our upper stage here shortly, or on our primary stage. Alright, so any other bleeding is going to be done with our... Uh, RCS, which we have tons of, so, I mean, we got lots and lots in our primary monopropellant tank. I mean, I need some of that to get us... So let's go to 40? Let's say 40. 40 is a good number, and see what happens on our way around. We can always... There we are. Exactly 40. All right, RCS off, SAS off, and let's get our cells rotating back towards the sun. What, you can't see it moving? Let's try that again. There's our mass thing at work. Nope, that's wrong. That's wrong. Okay, let's try that again. Rotate. Well, I guess that will work in a pinch. Okay, uh, I don't know exactly what I did there. All right, let's just do it that way. We're gonna do a nice big rotation. Beautiful. Beautiful. We are charging our batteries again. All right, and we are going to go see what we can do about skimming the actual atmosphere here. Let's just hope that it doesn't, that we're not bulky enough for our, uh... Oh. We're definitely getting close. We're now down into times 10 warp territory. So we're mostly worried about making sure we have enough to transmit the rest of our data home. Let's actually do it this way. We'll transfer, we're going to recharge the uh, prime core's uh, battery and disable its electrical. And so that the this we have a maximum amount of energy while we're landing. Okay. And boop. Good. So the lander Electricals are completely disabled at the moment. Oh, and here we go. We are now in the atmosphere. And temperature scan. Here we go. Okay. Temperature scan being transmitted. And... Pressure scan. Also transmitting. Here we go. All right, so that was upper atmosphere at 40 kilometers right on the nose. Okay. So are we getting any atmospheric effect on our apoapsis? So we should be getting something if we are low enough for that to happen. 85.3. I would say we are definitely not getting 
anything dramatic on that front. Which means we're going to have to... Uh, long story short, definitely not enough to matter. No, not even remotely enough to matter. We got one-tenth of a kilometer out of that. So we're going to need to go down to 30, I think. All right, we are in atmosphere, so yeah, our warping options are limited, unfortunately. But with any luck, our next pass will not be nearly so uh, problematic. I mean, I could probably just pull myself down into the atmosphere here with a little uh, retro burning. But let's see what happens when we get out of the uh, atmosphere. There we are. That noise is so obnoxious, by the way. It's interesting, don't get me wrong, it's a very interesting sound. So we're going to put the parry down to 30 and see if that works any better. I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm cur actually sort of curious about the characteristics of uh, Duna's atmosphere anyways. So we're going to do this burn, a pure retro burn at the Apoapsis. And it's actually going to be done with RCS exclusively. Now, I actually probably have enough juice on this uh, primary ship to actually... Uh, I probably do have enough to land. But... Almost there. Okay, RCS on. Drifting towards our, our retrograde marker. It's just going to be a plain old retro burn. Nothing fancy, no fuss, no muss. Okay, and accelerate, decelerate, and I'll take it down to, oh, I might even take it down to 25. That's a thought. I mean, this RCS we can't bring with us, so I'm not worried about wasting it. Twenty... One... Twenty-five. Sure, let's do it. See what happens to our uh, apoapsis on this pass. I mean, it's entirely conceivable that we're going to get actual retro effects, in which case... Well, we could be in a little bit of trouble, among other things. Alright, a little drift. Let's make sure we are pointed at the sun. We do want to get a, any recharging we can. If we hit lower atmosphere on the way down, um, we're definitely going to want a transmission or two while we're in the atmosphere. Okay. The only downside is that this is going to be a little sluggish. I might speed some of this up, depending on what happens here. Just do a, a little mini time warps or cuts. We'll see. I mean, I'm going to record the audio straight here, but I'll just chop it up as needed. <sighs> and there's our physics based warp since we are in official atmosphere now. So I'm not sure where the uh, lower atmosphere technically starts, but we are officially in the atmosphere at this height. So let's see, so we are lower than we went last time, and we still have not pulled another tick off of our apoapsis at 33, nothing. Oh, there we go, now we're getting some effect. What will be very interesting will be to see if we actually get any significant atmospheric uh, heating as we come through this app, as we come through. We're coming at it sideways and so far our, oh, are we, are we twisting? We are twisting. Our, uh, we are being pulled towards uh, a retrograde here. 
Oh, look at that. The Aurora. The Aurora of Duna. Okay, and we're going to turn on the uh, SAS here, because... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Come on, that was a minor oops. I forgot I was I forgot I was warping, to be honest. Okay, we could get it down. I think it will take a few orbits to pull it off. We're just about to periapse. We could use a little RCS at the periapse here to, well, cut a lot of time off of this, to be honest. See, there we go. We're pulling down that periapsis. We might as well. You know, this could take forever if we don't, or this apoapse. So if we pull a whole bunch of height off of that now, in fact, if we pull it down into the atmosphere, then this will become a landing trajectory. Of a sort. A supersonic landing trajectory. That tank is still nice. It's got lots of RCS fuel left. Okay, we are doing our atmospheric re-entry now with RCS that would be otherwise wasted when we uh, ditch the lower stage. So I am unconcerned. We have fully charged batteries on the upper portion of the stage. And we are about to circularize our... There we go. Okay, now we can just use supersonics um, atmospheric drag to slow us down. Which is kind of cool. We don't need to get rid of the solar panels yet. They're not hurting anything. Temperature 35. So above zero, but looking good. And now we are officially slowing down nicely. So what we'll do is we will get out, of, get rid of the uh, upper stage, the lower stage, and deploy the drag chute as soon as we figure it's safe to do so. 2500, so quite a bit later, the other chutes deploy at 500. And then we have the engines to finish the job as we get close to ground, which is perfect. And... Which will also hopefully mean... Oops! No, no we do not want that yet. You just see that getting caught on our... Uh... Let's see, we're getting buffeted by the uh, atmosphere right now. Alright, and we are definitely slowing down faster than we are falling, which is perfect. Which means we are heading to the ground at an altitude of 23 kilometers and falling. Where are we going to land? Other side of the bloody planet in the dark, huh? Unless I do something drastic right now? Yep. Take it down. Whoa! Ooh, we've just reoriented means we are coming into a landing trajectory now. It's still on the other side of the Goram planet. I don't want to land in the dark if I can avoid it. Alright, here we go. We have officially established our landing. It's not going to happen. There is no way we're going to get anywhere other than... Well, that just means we're going to switch over to our other... Uh, get rid of the rest of the ship here shortly. Definitely nothing to worry about. Not with the way we've just done this. It's almost there. Unfortunately, the Terminator line for the... Uh, oh, and there goes our RCS and this little guy. Which is okay. And that means it's... Turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. Decouple. And start burning our way... Activate the RCS. No, 
we need to chase our we are trying to chase our prograde a little bit more vertical or retro I should say and bring our landing line a little bit closer to the light side of the planet As long as we got lots, of, I mean, we've got tons of fuel left. It won't be an issue. Okay, bring it around. Looks good. Okay. A little bit more. And there goes the rest of the ship. It'll very slowly get its way to the ground. Okay, and I think it's coming time to deploy the drag chute. Yeah, I think we could do that. Okay, that is now officially ready to deploy and we'll deploy for real shortly. Let's see, we're gonna slow down a little more here. Probably coming in a little more aggressively than I should have, but we'll be okay. As long as we have enough fuel left to really give ourselves a final slow down when we get to the ground. We should be just bloody fine. Excellent. We're going to land at sunset, aren't we? Alright, we're going to stop right there and let the uh, let physics take care of the rest. Oh, we are now in the... Uh... Oh, I hope that doesn't rip this thing off. There's our little bits of upper atmosphere data. Oh, there goes the drog chute. All right, let's just hold off a second. We can hang on to this. Let's get our landing gear deployed properly here. There we go. Okay. Here come our other parachutes. Slowing us down more. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, slowing us down. How much is it going to slow us down to? 20. Oh, 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 oh,
Nope. Definite nope. Okay. Oh, maybe? Maybe? Oh? Oh? Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. Now that is a dignified lander. Beautiful. How's that for a shot, everyone? Is that not beautiful? A very thin atmosphere, a nearly black sky. And it's sunset. Let's just watch the sunset. Very, very slowly. We'll watch the Martian sunset. And then we will go and look. That's going to take a while, isn't it? <laughs> it's actually going to take quite a while to land. But there we are. Duna Probe Mark II. And Ike Probe. Success. Completion. Let's go see. Check out our, our science. Because we got science. Yes, we did. Excellent news. So this ship as designed can definitely do gilly, but it, the EVE probe will need a uh, pressure. I'm going into the wrong building, aren't I? Yep. No, we're not designing a ship today. We are going to look at our science. Oh, and. And, 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 and. Explore Duna. Done. Duna and Duna done. Let's have a look at our contracts and see where we're at. Explore Even Gilly. So we have completed the contracts to explore uh, Duna and Ike. Nice. They're now looking, suggesting we could go towards Drez and Moho. Might as well grab those. I'm always up for grabbing. Uh, exploration contracts, because they're non-expiring, always available. Cool. So that's pretty much... I mean, those missions were expensive, but they paid for themselves, so... Perfect. We have 3,581 science. Each one costs 540. So... All four of these tier sciences we should be able to get now. Let's just see. Let's just conserve. So 500, 1,080, 2,160. Yes, we can We can clear this. 2,160. These cost 2,500. So we will not have enough for the next tier yet. So we are going to have to do another science mission. We are not getting the Coppola module yet. Even though the biosensor would be nice. One of the things we are about to get is the uh, atmospheric... Um, sensor array, which is something we could send to uh, Duna as a separate mission. <sighs> Probably not worth the trouble right this instant, though. We got everything we needed out of Duna. So let's get all of the uh, next tier, because that's going to let us design a bunch of new uh, ship, put together a few new ships. Yeah, no, we'll get all the new stuff, and that will direct us towards where our next targets are. The OK2. OKTO2. Okay, Let's see. What do we have here? Remote guidance. And... Oh, there we go. Maximum safe prep service. Six. Yeah, all six atmospheres. Hold on. 2.25. So six atmos these probe cores can handle six atmospheres. What's the pressure of Eve? That might be enough. So if if six atmospheres is what we get on Eve, which I'll go look up before we do anything new, this is our target right here. We need 1,100 science to get ourselves this uh, this tech, which will let us do the exploration of Eve, if my calculations are correct. So, in the next episode, we can start thinking about maybe doing a, sh I guess a ship to Gilly was a place to start. We could also do a another gong show of an atmospheric flyer of some sort and try and get that atmospheric pressure scan or that sensor atmospheric sensor array. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.